Hello and welcome to another episode of the Back Nine Report. We're happy to have our good friend Carlos Torres back with us, our normal co-host. Carlos, welcome back, buddy. What have you been up to? Hey, glad to be back. Uh, usually, you know, I'm the one starting, but hey, it's your show now. So I'm just glad to be here, just working a lot. Um, it's been a heck of a year. <laughs> I've been working, uh, personal stuff as well that's been happening, but hey, Glad to jump at the opportunity to be with you once again. Well, I know you keep up with the golf stuff because we text back and forth a fair amount and uh, you're always right on top of stuff. So uh, we wanted to, we got a couple special things going on right now. And one of them is this uh, OWGR, the official world golf ranking has uh, finally ruled on the LIV's request for their tour to receive world ranking points. So their players can qualify for the majors and top tournaments around the world. Given the announcement last year, Carlos, that the PGA Tour, the DP World Tour, and the LIV would all live together under one umbrella with PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan in command, we thought it was a done deal that the OWGR would grant world ranking points to the LIV. In a statement, Peter Dawson, who is the chairman of the official World Golf Ranking Board, said, we are not at war with them, meaning the LIV. This decision not to make them eligible is not political. It is entirely technical. LIV players are self-evidently good enough to be ranked. They're just not playing in a format where they can be ranked equitably with the other 24 tours and thousands of players trying to compete on them. This recent decision is somewhat of a surprise to me. What about you, Carlos? What's your thoughts? I'm surprised. But at the same time, uh, what they're using is a technicality, right? If you want to call it that way. Uh, the points that they're saying, hey, the LIV doesn't play 22 holes. Well, they play 54. Uh, the OG, GWR says, okay, a tour has to have 78 players at least. LIV has 48. There's no way they're going to get there. The other thing's uh, importance are the OGWR says, the LWGR says, okay, um, you have to have a 36-hole cut. That's what tournaments do. LIV has no cut. They have played uh, all three rounds uh, consecutive, so there's no, no that. Um, they also are saying, well, we we require tours to have this Monday qualifiers. LIV doesn't because they don't have qualifiers. What they have is contract players. They don't have to qualify. They're already there. Uh, there's no Q, Q, Q school or anything like it for LIV. So, again, because they are contract players, but then this, the old WGR says I want a Q school. So the other thing that they're saying, hey, we have team events. Shouldn't that count? No, it doesn't count on, towards that. So every LIV tournament is a team and individual event. So the if they're going to go on that, and uh, the the old WGR has been clear, if you want, you can resubmit, but you're going to have to change uh, these things. I just don't see it happening because that's what the LIV has been predicated on doing, hey, we want to make it shorter, easier for the players, and definitely none of that. I don't see it happening at this time. And uh, at that point, uh, there's more discussion then about what, what now, Fred? What's going to happen now? Yeah, that's that's what I want to talk about a little bit too. So what you're talking about is that the LIV is basically a closed shop. Um, there's only the, the 24 players, the top 24 players on the LIV every year are guaranteed their spot for next year. Then there are those guys under contract that, that get the big money, like Phil Mickelson, Lee Westwood, Bubba Watts, and Paul Casey and Ian Poulter. Even though they're outside the top 24, they're going to play next year because they're getting the big bucks. They're the names. They're going to play. So there's only really three players that are going to be added for next year. And that came through like a, a minor tour event or a promotions tournament. And, and, and Andy Ogletree is a fourth player who advanced through the international series on the Asian tour. We all know Andy Ogletree. He was a promising young player. I think he won a U.S. amateur. A great young college player came up and struggled on the PGA Tour, jumped the LIV, even got bounced off of it because he played so poorly. Now he's got his game back in form and, and uh, hopefully we'll get back on there. But most of the tours, Carlos, typically have a 20 to 25 percent turnover. Uh, so on the PGA Tour, if you're saying, you know, it's the top 125 or the top 70, I guess, receive their cards automatically now. Uh, but about 
25 or 30 of those every year change. Uh, only the top guys are able to stay in that top 70, get to stay every year. So um, the only guy that is currently inside the top 50 on the official world golf ranking is Brooks Kepka. And we know though that, I mean, he was runner up at the masters last year and he won the uh, PJ championship. So the only Avenue left for the LIV guys to qualify for these majors or to get into the uh, world ranking points is to do well in the majors or like Cam Smith does play in like uh, some Australian events or New Zealand or, you know, someplace else that does have, that does offer world ranking point. I think Cam Smith won uh, one of the Australian events last year. And so that jumped him, jumped him up also. So uh, Carlos, where do these guys go next? That's, that's a really good question. Um, if I'm Brooks Kepka, if I'm Cam Smith, uh, if I'm Bryson DeChambeau, uh, I'm playing out my contract and I'm getting out of there in a hurry. Prize money's up 30% on the PGA Tour. They can get world ranking points. They're good enough. They're going to get in the top 70. Yeah, they're going to have to do a mea culpa, and they're going to have to, you know, have a little bit of pain to get back on the tour. But they're going to have to do that, it looks like to me, Carlos. And it looks like to me, the LIV, this is might kill it if they can't figure out a way to get official world golf ranking points. Yeah, that, that's a big decision for them. I mean, Cam Smith, like you mentioned, Cam and, and Brooks are the only two right now in the top 50. Cam is 15, Brooks is 18. Uh, besides that, Patrick Reed would be the next one at 62. Um, the ones that have win one majors, which are exempt. At this time, anyone that is exempt, which would be Cam, Brooks, uh, Bryson, Dustin, Sergio, um, Phil, Patrick, Charles, and Keimer. But Keimer won last time uh, at the 2014 Open. So this is his last year. His next year will be his last exempt uh, year. So everybody else that ha has to come up with a way of trying to see how they would qualify for those uh, world points. But at the same time, now you say, is it really worth it for, for the LIV to continue? Or because then they're just going to have to change all of those points that they have been predicating about the 54 players, the 54 holes, the 48 players, no cuts. Uh, either they change all that and then make sure to add more players, how they're going to do it or not. I don't know, because then you're going to have to add at least 30 more players on their contract to make the 78. Then you're going to have to do the 72 holes. So it, it changes the whole, the whole concept of what the LIV has been. That part it's definitely something I don't see it happening. Uh, or at least if they're going to continue, then why are they doing this merger? Which is, the the question is really, should they keep the LIV alive after this? Hey, just like you're saying, hey, my bad. Let's just get back to one just good tour. Let's try to get some of those good things that they were incorporating from the LIV, like maybe some team events and all that stuff get them here uh, but I, I really don't see the reason now anymore if they have to change all that good if they do it but I don't see it happening for it uh, I, I it really changes their whole happen. concept it just doesn't make any sense so I want to make a couple points before we leave this subject Carlos uh, number one the LIV, P LIV PGA Tour merger announced back in June is currently on hold while the U.S. Justice Department looks into antitrust implications implications from the proposed merger so that's kind of on hold right now nothing's being done with that then the second part of this carlos this is a question for you or an idea if if i'm al ramonian who's the pif guy the public investment fund guy from saudi arabia who's putting all the money into this stuff uh and he's now the the projected to be the chairman of the board for the new entity that will include the pga tour and the dp world tour this might be a good reason to let the LIV die a natural death and move on with this bigger plan of putting everything together. What do you think about that? I totally agree with you. I, I think at this time, um, hey, it was a great way to get what you wanted, what they wanted, right? Uh, now they have, uh, they're going to have some sort of control because Al is going to be um, chairman of the board. Does it mean that they're going to have free will or free reign, right? But at least 
they're going to be able to implement a lot of those things that they have been wanting to have. So I totally agree. This is time now for LIV to cut their losses at this time. Hey, and you did great. You made it. You made your point. Uh, players are earning more than they, they ever would think that they were going to earn. And uh, I think it's just a happy medium now just to let it let it die, like you're saying. Bring everybody back and let's just concentrate on one tour and try to make it what it wanted to be, to be a, a world uh, tour at, this, at the end. So you're telling me that Greg Norman is going to finish runner-up once again? I think so. I think so. <laughs> Carlos, Always the bright you... name. Always the bright name. Exactly. Great having you back on Back in Our Report. Thanks a lot for uh, for doing this with us. Great to be here. Thank you, Fred.